Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm, I'm sorry that we can't do this together in person, but we're excited to host the first ever Facebook Fuel event in India. Uh, India is a very special and important country for us. Uh, millions of people here use our products every day to stay in touch with friends and family, uh, whether it's a WhatsApp message or a Facebook post or a photo on Instagram. And millions of small businesses across the country use WhatsApp business and Messenger to reach customers, manage orders, and, and grow their businesses. And in fact, uh, we actually test some of our uh, new features here first before rolling them out globally. And speaking of tests, uh, we just announced that we are hosting India's a uh, tour of Australia on demand on, on Facebook Watch. Um, I, I'm not exactly a sports guy myself, but, but I understand that that's quite a big deal here. And what I do know is that India uh, is home to a lot of incredibly talented people. Now uh, we see that in the folks that we recruit in our offices, uh, both in, in India and uh, at our headquarters back in California. Uh, but this is more than just about Facebook, because uh, what happens in India uh, here is important for the whole world as well. Uh, Prime Minister Modi's Digital India vision has opened up opportunities for the industry to, to partner uh, with the government to accelerate uh, growth and development through technology. Uh, and India is building local capabilities and, and tech capacity to, to power innovative new business models and, and provide Indian citizens access uh, to digital and financial inclusion. So decisions that are made here shape the global discussion. About how, discuss, uh, about how technology can drive uh, more economic opportunity and better outcomes for people. And a, a lot of Indian organizations are leading the way in using technology to build safer communities and more inclusive financial systems. And uh, whether it's in social commerce or education or financial services, there is a lot of innovation uh, that happens here. And we are proud to partner with some of the teams that are working on these important challenges. So there's a, a, a very entrepreneurial culture here uh, that's, that's quite remarkable. Um, it's a great example of how access to better tools can unlock more opportunity for people. Um, and we see that not just in the tech startup scene, uh, but in the millions and millions of small businesses that recognize the value uh, that all these tools can provide. So at Facebook, you know, we like to say that uh, we are in the business of serving small businesses. And Nowhere is this more true than in India. Uh, this is especially important because small businesses here will be a key part of the global recovery going forward. And we are focused on making sure we build the best tools for them. So uh, this is part of a much broader conversation about how we can all uh, make sure that tech delivers for everyone. And that's one of the reasons why we, we wanted to partner with Geo, uh, which has played such a key role in giving hundreds of millions of Indians access to uh, the benefits of the internet. That, that everything that it can provide and, and fostering this entrepreneurial culture. And with that, I am really glad uh, to welcome Mukesh Ambani, uh, the chairman and managing director of Reliance Industries, to talk about where things stand in terms of uh, the country's digital transformation and what we should expect in the years ahead. So uh, Mukesh, thank you very much for being here. Um, and and let's let's get started. Mark, uh, first of all, congratulations to you and your team for organizing this Facebook Fuel for India event. I'm sure this event will provide a lot of fuel of ideas to fire India's growth engine, as you just described. The most powerful idea that can propel India's growth is that young people can create great enterprises and new businesses. And all the young Indian people see an inspiring young icon in Mark Zuckerberg. They are motivated when they see how in just 14 years, Facebook has become the face of a digitally connected India. So let me begin by conveying my best wishes to the success of your dreams for India, Indians, and small Indian businesses. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, you know, so maybe today uh, we should start with a topic that I know is top of mind for, for a lot of us, and that is COVID um, and the impact that it has had on all of our lives and communities. So uh, I'm curious from your perspective, how is India doing right now? 
Um, and, and when do you expect things are going to return to normal? And I know um, that Reliance has taken a, a number of big steps to help the community and help the country. And it's been a big year for you. Um, so I'm curious to hear how did your company adapt to help move forward in the midst of this pandemic? So the sheer magnitude of COVID-19 pandemic, like everybody else in the world, did startle all of us in India. But then I think it is not in India's DNA to be deterred by a crisis. I firmly believe that a crisis is too precious to be wasted. Every crisis presents an opportunity for new growth. And India has faced the COVID crisis with enormous resilience and resolve. Prime Minister Modi has led India from the front. And while we are not uh, as rich a country as uh, some of our Western counterparts, being fiscally prudent, he has taken steps to take care of our vulnerable. We have given free food for right up to December of this year to over 800 million Indians. 200 million citizens in India are getting direct cash transfer of 1500 rupees in their bank account. Uh, that is the digitally connected India. And now we are ready at pretty much par with the world to roll out one of the largest vaccine programs in the first half of 21 under uh, uh, Prime Minister's uh, leadership. We at uh, Reliance and Reliance Foundation right, have also taken steps. Uh, as you know, Reliance has uh, over 350,000 employees across the length and breadth of uh, India. And uh, we have taken steps to protect our 2 million in our family and the community uh, around them. In Mumbai, we have built a hospital just dedicated to COVID. We have uh, life sciences as part of our business. So we've tested up uh, early on. We have uh, really ramped up testing and we believe that that testing helped in tracing and isolation and uh, at least reduce fatalities in our communities to a very low level. We have produced uh, PPEs. We are in the textile business in Reliance and uh, India did not have. We used to import all our protective gear from the external world. In a matter of months, we, as Reliance, we produced 100,000 PPEs and we are now exporters from India. And this happened during the uh, COVID time. And most importantly, in the early days when we were a little stuck, we as the Reliance Foundation distributed 55 million, one of the largest meal distribution program for the vulnerable in all the states and villages. So we have uh, played our part. And uh, as far as Geo is concerned, right, we had our own dedicated team and I could tell you that uh, we had never imagined that we would all work from home and uh, the network traffic uh, grew multiple percentage and none of us stepped out and we could maintain 99%, uh, 0.99% availability so that uh, Indians could work from home, shop from home, study from home, remain connected to the rest of the world. You know, uh, Mark, sometimes I wonder that if the pandemic had struck India just four or five years earlier, we would have not been in as good a shape as what we are today with all the connectivity we have. And the credit for that must go to our Prime Minister's uh, Digital India vision, where he motivated the entire industry to roll out broadband in the first five years of uh, uh, his first term and during the pandemic India has attracted the largest uh, foreign direct investment in its history. Mark, we have our own example of how Geo and Facebook 
concluded our partnership right in the middle of lockdown right? and let me tell you with utmost sincerity that we at reliance and geo immensely value our partnership with facebook thank you for your faith in geo thank you mark for your faith in india i have no hesitation in going on record that it is your investment that set the ball rolling not only for geo but for the indian fdi which has been the largest ever in its history and our partnership between geo and facebook will actually demonstrate that it is great for india indians and small indian businesses and i believe mark that our actions will speak louder than our words in the coming months and years thank you so you know one one of the big opportunities that that i see with this partnership facebook and geo partnership um is the role that we can play together in supporting the millions of small businesses in india um especially now with the impact that covid is having um and accelerating the move that a lot of businesses have um from physical storefronts to to digital ones in this in this digital future so i'm i'm curious what role do you see uh technology playing in this post covid world especially as it relates to all of these small businesses that i know uh you, you share a passion with me that that it, it is just critical that we serve them absolutely mark and let me point out a very unique feature about our partnership perhaps not many people have understood this because before this partnership right i believe that each one of us was mainly a communication platform together we now have become a value creation platform for our customers and small businesses and i firmly believe that technology with all the digitization steps that india has taken will democratize wealth and value creation right for individuals and small businesses and let me explain this very simply whatsapp has hundreds of millions of subscribers in india jio has hundreds of millions of subscribers in india Geo Mart which is our uh, retail service right actually has the aspiration of serving tens of millions of small shopkeepers in India who are the bedrock of employment so what does this mean this means jio brings digital connectivity whatsapp now with whatsapp pay brings digital interactivity and the ability to move to close transactions and create value and geo mart brings the unmatched online and offline retail opportunity that gives our small shops which exist in villages and small towns in india a chance to digitize and be at par with anybody else in the world to my mind more wealth creation means more employment more business and we together and our platforms and the tools that we will provide to small businesses and to individual consumers i believe will drive india to a 5 trillion economy and will make a much more equal india with more equal wealth growth at the bottom of the pyramid you know mark i firmly believe that the next two decades india will grow to be among the top 3 economies in the world but more importantly it will become a premier digital society it will be a modern society with young people driving it with young businesses driving it and our per capita income will go from 1800 2000 per capita to 5000 per capita our mid income or the middle class in india which is about 50% of its total number of households will grow to 3 to 4% and i think that uh, facebook geo and a lot of other companies and entrepreneurs in the world have a golden opportunity to be in india 
to be part of this economic and social transformation that is that we are witnessing and that will accelerate in the coming decades. I completely agree. Um, and your company has already done so much to help fuel this. Um, Reliance, of course, brought about the 4G revolution in India. Um, and I know that 5G now is another big focus for you. Um, but what your company has done I, here, I think, has been truly remarkable in helping to bring hundreds of millions of people onto the internet and, and bringing opportunity. And I'm curious, if you look ahead uh, to the future in India, um, what other technologies or developments are you excited about now? And wh where do you see uh, the country in the next five to 10 years? Well, as I mentioned to you, uh, Mark, uh, I, I really see India accelerating as a premier uh, digital society. Uh, I see us uh, integrating both 5G and just yesterday our Prime Minister has said that uh, he wants every village and every gram panchayat. India has 680,000 villages and uh, we have a population of 1.3 billion people and he wants everybody to be empowered on the information highway with uh, high speed uh, fixed broadband and which, which is uh, happening. Uh, we also think that compute and very low latency compute is real, right? I think that there is a great opportunity for really bringing education and healthcare with the second generation reforms that were done in the last six months, right? We have a unique opportunity in terms of, and as GEO, uh, we are connecting all the 1.9 million schools in India and the 58,000 universities at any point in time, we will have in the coming decades about 200 million children or young adults between the age of three and 18 in our education system. And I think that in a span of 10 years, right, we can set for ourselves an objective really to reskill India and the talent that you talked about, right, can improve 10x, right? Today, you're just seeing the creamy layer, but uh, that's what technology can do to really make a better India and a better world. The same thing we can do in health and uh, all the emerging technology and integrations where we can make sure that we deliver uh, services uh, and we deliver good proactive health. We've learned that and I think we are going to use technology. Uh, we are working very closely with all the authorities to make sure that we provide the technology tools and backbone for even vaccination in the coming quarters, right? Uh, using technology. So I think health, education, uh, we've already, uh, and I think that what India has done is uh, in a sense, uh, we have democratized uh, value creation with the drive of our prime minister. And uh, you can see it in payments, you would see it in terms of uh, making sure that uh, you know, technology is easily available and we made it affordable so that millions of millions of people, even at this lower per capita basis, can use this in a large market. And uh, with that, finally, I really see the enterprise and the enthusiasm of young Indians and young, the aspirations of young Indians and their confidence, right? That is really driving India. And that is why I think that the next two decades are going to be historic in terms of the social and economic transformation. Uh, that, that makes sense. I mean, it, and you, 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 of course, already talked about um, commerce and driving small business and entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, it, it always blows me away that India has more than 60 million small businesses and, um, you know, millions of people around the country who rely on them for jobs. And, that's a big part of what I hope that our partnership can serve here. We support uh, more than 50 million WhatsApp business app users globally every month um, already. Um, and more than 15 million of these are in India. Um, so, you know, with, with communities around the world now in lockdown, uh, there are a lot of these entrepreneurs who need digital tools that they can rely on to find and communicate with, with customers and grow their businesses. And you now this is just something that I think that our partnership 
um, can can really help with. And, and of course, beyond the impact on small businesses, um, I just think that this year has reminded us of, of how um, essential technology can be as a tool for for people to just connect with each other. You know, whether it's using the the networks that your companies have established um, or the tools that uh, that, that we've built um, to be able to uh, have that human connection and, and find important information. And um, you know, as you said, you know, I can't imagine you know going through the pandemic. Um, 10 years ago, but but if we two decades ago, but when the internet was still nascent, um, it just would have been a completely different experience. And um, technology, of course, is allowing us to 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 um, to make sure that we can get um, accurate information out to people. Um, that has implications in health, like you're talking about, um, in education and helping um, serve people better. And um, and and I think it, it shows a lot of the promise. Uh, for, for what's ahead. And I think we've certainly fared better now uh, than we would have if the pandemic had hit us before. I, I couldn't agree more, uh, Mark. You know, I know, um, you know, going back to, uh, to, to Reliance, um, you know, one of the, the, the great business stories in, in history, you know, your father founded Reliance Industries and he has just this incredible legacy um, here in India. And now I've read that, that he once um, held up a postcard in his office and said, if every Indian uh, could speak with each other at the cost of this postcard, where will India be? And you know, your father clearly had a vision for where um, things were heading in the country. Um, and because today Indians can communicate with one another for less than the, the cost of a postcard. Um, and that's what we've tried to do with, um, with, with, with messaging. And hopefully we can do that together with payments and, and make it so that people can you know, use India's um, new UPI system, which I think is just is just great. It's a, it's a tremendous public good um, that the government has, has put out there. Um, but but I'm curious. Before we get into to, to UPI and, and more on that, um, I'm curious. What's the most important thing that you learned um, from your father and his legacy that has helped you build uh, these these just amazing businesses and, and get to to where they are today? So Mark, uh, thank you for those kind words on my father. Right. Uh, just so that when he motivated us in 2000 in terms of saying, can you make uh, voice at the co cost of a postcard right? in 2020, right? Uh, we're very proud that uh, Geo has pioneered free voice. So all like our 400 million people, and that's a tribute to his vision, uh, are on our network have, uh, have free voice. And uh, uh, as uh, you said, uh, my father like was a son of a school teacher right? uh, uh, he came to mumbai with just a thousand rupees in 1960 and uh, established a reliance with a belief that i will invest in businesses of the future and i will invest in talent and uh, for all the young people at reliance and across india i repeat like my learnings in terms of building reliance uh, in terms of really three basic tenets right one is uh, for entrepreneurs uh, it's important to have courage and self-belief and uh, there can be no better person to demonstrate that in the last couple of decades than you yourself mark so you know all of us uh, believe that uh, you know, we have to believe in ourselves, right? And uh, all of us know as entrepreneurs that we don't succeed at the first attempt. And self-belief comes to you when you fail. And self-belief increases your confidence when you succeed. So courage and self-belief uh, is something that I always tell entrepreneurs that remember uh, that that's important. The second piece that he started like and he's instilled into all of us right is that while you succeed it's important to always have empathy and creativity in uh, everything that you do and uh, by empathy i mean put yourself in the other's shoe and make sure that uh, how you make them feel is how you would want to feel and uh, you know at uh, reliance we do that at many levels now 
we care for our employees, our investors, society, environment, and above all, uh, national interest, uh, India. And uh, you know, within creativity, and I always give this example in terms of saying that when Reliance needed to grow, right? Uh, capital markets were not there, it was 1980s. And uh, my father came up by saying, I will actually share shares of Reliance, which was never done in the private sector. And uh, uh, in the 80s, right, he, the first AGM of Reliance was in a football ground. And we had uh, 60,000 shareholders. So his, uh, and you and I both do annual general meetings, and his AGM in the 1980s for Reliance was in a football ground and he said, my purpose is really to win investors confidence and that and you know since then like there is so creativity and empathy are are critical as you go along and the final thing that i have learned from my father is really the importance of uh, relationship trust and loyalty the whole of reliance right now we are hundreds of thousands of people is one big family we are not related by birth but we are really woven together by passion, purpose, and conviction, right? We have faith in one another. We are loyal to one another of this large Reliance family. And for us, it's always uh, one for all and all for one. And I hope that, you know, uh, a lot of people around the world can relate to this. Uh, that's what we believe uh, at Reliance and, uh, you know, for all of us at Reliance, he will still be the founder. And uh, if we follow his vision in terms of investing in businesses of the future. Mark, that brings me to now uh, my questions uh, for you. Uh, Mark, what made you believe in India and the Geo story? As I said, that you have uh, uh, started this FDI avalanche in India and you were the world recognized when uh, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg in the middle of lockdown said, I'm going to bet on India and I'm going to make, even in this uncertain times, right? One of the largest foreign direct investments in India. And what do you think uh, of the digital network that uh, you are clearly like, you know, I call you the architect of the digital network of the world, like, like while I have built some connectivity and broadband connectivity in India. You've done that for the world. Uh, that is, uh, you know, and please share with us your experience of as the digital architect of the world, how uh, your uh, global Facebook has uh, helped people uh, in this crisis and your perspective of the crisis and where uh, where you see the world today and where it is going after you just explained to us uh, India. Your, your words are incredibly generous. I and mean, I started this to, to help give people a, a tool to stay connected with their friends um, and then expand to friends and family and communities. And um, a lot of this has just been that uh, that ends up being a universal human phenomenon. No matter what country you're in, um, you know, everyone cares about their friends and family and, and their communities and wants to stay connected. And what we've seen is that India is actually home to the largest communities in the world across Facebook and WhatsApp and, and getting there on Instagram um, as well. And it's just so we see the the um, the vitality and the entrepreneurship and the creativity of, of businesses and, and how much people want to connect. And, um, and, and you see um, a, a tremendous number of people coming online, a lot of that thanks to your investments and, and the work that you've done to enable hundreds of millions of people to come online here. Um, and I just see a very promising future in India. Um, you know, we talked briefly about how uh, there's a, a big trend of financial inclusion ahead and um, how the ease of, of payments is, is going to be such a big deal for commerce and, and giving people um, you know, self-reliance and, and, um, and, and kind of control of their own destiny. And, um, 
and and a lot of that is is you know we just launched WhatsApp payments in India last month. Um, so now you can send money to your friends and family uh, through WhatsApp as easily as sending a message, and um, and it's it's uh, that was possible because of the UPI system um, that has been built in India, unified payments interface. It makes it easy for anyone to instantly accept payments across different apps. Um, you know, I think we're we're working with. 140 banks, um, or it's supported by by 140 banks out of the gate, um, and India is the first country in the world to do anything like this. You know, and, and um, it's you know, so we're grateful to be able to support this kind of innovation, um, to help to work uh, to to create more prosperity and help achieve a more digital India. Um, and frankly, I think that a lot of other places around the world are going to be better off when they follow some of this lead that India has set. In creating public goods like this, so um, there's really a tremendous amount to be inspired by um, with what is going on in India now, um, and we're just grateful to be able to serve um, our, our community here and, and help uh, people stay connected with the people they care about, but also create economic opportunity as well. Thanks, Mark. Uh, as you said, like uh, we are looking forward for. Uh, your involvement and innovation in India, like uh, creating benefit for hundreds of millions of people uh, uh, and then taking like this innovation to the rest of the world. I hope that the rest of the world learns from Indian policy and what uh, Facebook is able to achieve in India. And like uh, we as Indians will be very proud if Facebook says we did it first in India and then took it to a hundred countries. And uh, I look forward to working with you on that. Uh, Mark, uh, while all of us would love to know your views on how the world is changing and what you and Facebook are thinking about and what uh, you see the future as, and just give us your perspective, Mark. I think that there are a number of very important trends, but maybe I'll just talk about two. Uh, so one is that I think technology is giving individuals power and opportunities that were previously only held by large organizations. You know, so we've, we've spent a lot of time today talking about small businesses, but one of the things that I think is so powerful about the internet is it makes it so that individual entrepreneurs and small businesses can now have access to the same kind of tools for reaching new customers and doing sophisticated analytics and communication um, that previously only bigger companies would have been able to build up the capacity to do that. And individuals can now share their ideas online um, and, and get access to information in ways that previously only wealthier people or larger organizations would have had the capacity to share their ideas or get access to information at that kind of scale. And overall, I think that that just makes people's lives better. It's incredibly empowering and it's incredibly democratizing. And you know, India as the world's largest democracy, um, I, I think again, it really makes sense to lead there um, because just empowering individuals, which I know is something that you believe deeply in as well, um, is just gonna be a, a, a huge part of, of what um, will hopefully create a lot of prosperity um, as you mentioned, in the decades ahead. The other thing that I'm excited about, which is you know, maybe more of a technological vision for the future, um, there are a lot of interesting technologies, but one that I'm, I'm, one trend that I focus a lot on is that as people, we're always looking to connect with other, other people and share our experiences in the richest way that we can. So you know, if you look back to the beginning of the internet, um, you know, most of the internet was text, right? And that we could, we could text each other, chat, we could share our experiences. Um, but then connections got better. And then we got to photos being the primary way that we shared. And, you know, the, the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, you know, now a lot of sharing is through photos. And now we're now on the next step with now great 4G and, and, and coming 5G networks. Um, video is really becoming the primary way that people share. Anyone um, can largely capture something on their phones um, and can share it and stream it. And increasingly, people are able to consume that. And, and video is just a lot richer of a medium um, than than photos even can be. Right? When my when my daughters took their first steps, um, you know, I wanted to capture a video of that and share it, not just a photo. 
but I don't think video is the end of the line. Um, so a lot of what I'm focused on is creating, uh, helping to create virtual reality and augmented reality. So that way we can share not only um, kind of a video of, of an experience, but um, you can use virtual reality to, to go into an experience and feel like you're right there. Um, you can have holograms of digital objects um, that can that can kind of uh, be as realistic um, as the physical objects that are there. Maybe you know in five or ten years when we're having this conversation, um, you know I'll just a uh, hologram version of me will be sitting on the couch next to you instead of having to do this over a over a screen, um, and it'll feel a lot more realistic. Um, so I just think that that's going to be incredibly powerful, and that the the power of virtual and augmented reality is they deliver this sense of a presence. You feel like you're right there with another person, which really will be kind of the ultimate in in, in human connection. Um, and it will give people the opportunity to um, to work and to connect no matter where they want to be. So that's something that, that we're very focused on and invested in. And um, and I'm just very excited for the future. And um, on, on that note, let me maybe just wrap up and, and, um, and, and just say again how grateful I am um, for everything that you and your companies do um, and for the partnership. Um, I, I do think that uh, in, in so many ways, you know, not just um, Geo and, and the technology platforms, but the other businesses that you've built, um, you've had such a positive impact on, on improving the quality of lives for, um, for, for hundreds of millions of, of, of Indians. Um, you know, a big part of why I was excited to partner with you is there are not many people around the world um, who've just gone industry after industry and revolutionized them and improved them um, and, and continue to do it and have that hunger to improve um, the lives of so many people. So I just have a, a deep admiration for that. Um, and I am really looking forward to working together over the, the coming years and decades to make sure we can serve uh, people in India as well as possible. And hopefully a lot of those advances um, will be expanded outside of India as well to help people around the world. Um, but I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for, for your partnership on this. Um, and thank you for, for joining me for um, this inaugural Facebook Fuel event today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. And thank you for uh, sharing your uh, awesome vision of the future. You started this with uh, saying that on Facebook, you would see the India-Australia cricket match, right? I look forward to a day when Facebook will take me with uh, everything that you explained on virtual reality where I can, sitting in Mumbai, be in a stadium in Australia. And I'm sure that day with your digital architecture and leadership is not far away. Thank you so very much for having me. <laughs>